हेलो सेरेक्स टीम दिस इज डॉक्टर अनूप द मेडिकल एडवाइजर फॉर योर टीम recently in one of our webex uh, presentations what we have uh, focused was uh, the role of vitamin d3 in our product ferium d3 in erythropoiesis so let us try to evaluate the role of uh, vitamin d3 uh, for your convenience i'll be dividing this uh, video presentation into two parts so that it becomes easier for you to download uh, we understand uh, the internet receptivity at uh, various uh, regions so it becomes easier so this is a part one Uh, let us evaluate uh, the role of vitamin D3. Now, if you look at the prevalence of vitamin D3, there are various uh, studies or epidemiological studies which uh, have uh, stated that the uh, the prevalence of vitamin D uh, deficiency in India is more than seventy percent. It might go up to ninety to hundred percent also. Uh, that is because of mainly because of our ethnic uh, uh, wear, because of covered up clothing, because of lack of exposure to sun uh, sunshine. because of uh, covered up clothing and because of use of skin protectant skin creams uv uh, protectant creams which is uh, worn by many of uh, the teenage girls today and uh, apart from that la, diet which is poor in vitamin d restricted outdoor activity there are various uh, societies who have uh, classified uh, this vitamin d deficiency or vitamin d status uh, if you look at uh, us endocrine society what they are saying is uh, the levels about 30 nanograms per ml of 25 hydroxy vitamin d is what is ideal now 25 hydroxy vitamin d is a precursor form that is what is evaluated to look for the vitamin d status of humans so if the level goes below 20 nanograms per ml then it is called as deficiency if it is somewhere uh, between 21 to 29 then it is called as uh, sufficiency but to call it as a normal it should be above 30 nanograms so even if it is above 20 it's okay below 20 is deficiency below 10 is called as severe deficiency or profound deficiency toxicity is very unlikely to happen uh, if you, if the levels go beyond 150 nanogram per ml that is when toxicity can happen but it is very very unlikely right so how much is the ideal vitamin d that has to be consumed there are various committees uh, internationally they have a point about 400 to 600 international units or 800 international units in india the icmr the indian council of medical research at hyderabad they have suggested 400 iu uh, is the minimum requirement in the rda that should be the minimum level so we have to go beyond that only we should not consume less than that it should be either 400 or beyond 400 well is that really enough because our product is having 1000 international units what are the references for 1000 international units is there a relevant data so for this my dear colleagues i would like to say that there is a very strong reference coming from american college of obstetricians and gynecologists and they have um, given this committee opinion uh, um, it suggests clearly what i have highlighted in this uh, particular slide that in pregnancy 1000 to 2000 international units is considered to be safe so it can be safely recommended and that is what we have in our product as well what about the clinical studies there are a lot of clinical studies and these studies have used 1000 international units or even 800 to 1600 so 1000 international units uh, is backed up by a lot of clinical studies and therefore appears to be a very rational dose when we prescribe vitamin d3 what about the other countries prevalence if you look at the middle east countries uh, you will find even higher prevalence as compared to india probably because of the covered up clothing maybe because of lack of outdoor activity exposure to sunshine is again very minimal in those populations so that's for uh, you will find high prevalence of vitamin d deficiency in india it's always about 70 or more than 70% if you look at delhi if you look at north uh, um no so not north india then you will find uh, even very high chances of severe deficiency in one of the studies an author from uh, north india she mentioned that uh, 42% was the prevalence of not just vitamin d deficiency it is severe vitamin d deficiency less than 10 nanogram per ml probably uh, again uh, 
maybe because of the pollution in uh, uh, gurugram delhi that might be the reason or there might be other factors uh, or maybe too much of covered up clothing because of uh, uh, delhi of uh, sunshine either it is too high but still people are scared of uh, ultraviolet rays and because of this they are wearing lot of uh, sun protectants sunscreen lotions so maybe a lot of factors would be there now what vitamin d role we all know about the prime role of vitamin d3 it is for the skeletal uh, development the skeletal system development it helps in the development of bone and teeth by increasing the absorption of calcium from the intestine by preventing calcium excretion from the kidney that is a major role but apart from that uh, in the last two decades we are finding new roles of vitamin d3 uh, and immunomodulatory anti inflammatory these are the roles of vitamin d3 where uh, you know gynecologists are using vitamin d3 supplements uh other role is uh, role in erythropoiesis so let us evaluate this particular role of vitamin d3 in erythropoiesis okay so vitamin d3 has got two major action one is a direct action and another we call it as a indirect action in the direct action what vitamin d3 does is it stimulates the erythroid precursors inside the bone marrow and by virtue of that it will stimulate erythropoiesis so it was found that vitamin d receptors are present in various tissues one of the regions where vitamin d3 receptors were found was bone marrow so inside the bone marrow if there are receptors there will be a certain role of vitamin d3 so currently it is believed that vitamin d binds to its receptors it stimulates the precursors of uh, erythropoiesis so there is something called as burst forming unit erythroid cells these cells get proliferated and it leads to erythropoiesis apart from that it has got a synergistic role uh, or synergistic effect with erythropoietin so erythropoietin is a substance uh, it is produced by the kidney the kidney produces this substance whenever it senses inside the body hypoxia so hypoxia is a major stimulant for the production of erythropoietin so the moment kidney realizes that the blood supply is getting reduced when there is lack of oxygen in the tissues it immediately produces this erythropoietin and this erythropoietin is a major stimulant for erythropoiesis inside the bone marrow and this role of erythropoietin in erythropoiesis is stimulated by vitamin d3 that is the direct effects of vitamin d3 now indirectly it has got certain immunomodulatory anti inflammatory properties by virtue of which vitamin d is going to help in uh, anemia so let us try to understand what are these roles of vitamin d3 in uh, inflammation or anemia in inflammation so that is what i will discuss in my next part of the video so i request you all to kindly download my next part of the video as well for understanding the role of vitamin d3 in erythropoiesis thank you